Hey, good Thursday afternoon, everybody. It's Chief Meteorologist Brad Panovich. We're finally past yesterday's bad weather. We've got a couple days of cool, windy, dry weather, but now our focus turns to Sunday. And it's amazing. I got overwhelmed with questions. What about Sunday's severe weather threat? And here's the thing. Really, uh, there's not much of a severe weather threat yet. And the reason I say that is for our area, specifically the Carolinas, there is something to keep an eye on, potentially Monday morning. But the bigger threat I think everybody's referring to is what's going to happen to our south and whether or not we're going to see any of that. And I'll explain. I'll get into this. But um, uh, I think there's been a lot more hype about this being all over the place except for the actual location. So let me start with severe weather outlook. So this is today's outlook. You can see two areas, one to the north and one over Texas. And this one over Texas is important because this is part of the system we're watching that's going to be heading our way on Sunday. So let me go to the future severe weather outlooks. So this is today. We're going to go to tomorrow um, and you could see that area over Texas. So this is where things are going to start forming down here. Big piece of energy. This is a very dynamic system um, that's going to be swinging across the southern part of the country and then heading up kind of into the eastern part of the country. So that's tomorrow. We'll go to Saturday and notice over Texas. So this is our system. This is where most of the action is going to be for the next couple of days. Big area of low pressure moving this way, pulling up a lot of warm, humid air. But here's the thing about the Carolinas. While this is all going on, we're going to have high pressure and really chilly air. In fact, we could see patchy frost Saturday morning. And that cool air actually will deter severe weather initially. And that cool air, if it holds on, could eliminate severe weather risk completely for the Carolinas. But there's a huge caveat. I'll get into that in a minute. So this is Saturday, uh, a severe weather outlook. We'll go into Sunday. So this is Sunday severe weather outlook. And you could see the heart of this down to our south. But you see this little appendage up into the Carolinas. This is the big caveat. So late Sunday into early Monday, a strong cold front's going to come in. So initially all day Sunday, we should be wedged in. Cold air coming in, overrunning going on. But as this cold front moves in, does it displace this cold air? And do we get a squall line? Notice how the threat is mainly from Charlotte East. And then I'm going to go into Monday morning here. And let me see if it'll show Monday morning. There's Monday morning. Notice the threat is a low risk here along the coast. So this is the cold front sweeping through. So notice how it's really Sunday night in Monday more of an issue than it is on Sunday. And I'll talk more about that as we look at the guidance. So I'm going to look at the European model first. I will show you the GFS as well. Remember, all models are wrong, but some models are useful. The reason that models are important is they give us a range of possibilities. And oh, by the way, that works for COVID-19 as well. A lot of folks think that you're supposed to get specific numbers. People need to look at the spreads in those um, to give us an idea of worst case, best case scenario. So here's a look at the European. Notice how cold it is. That's snow up in West Virginia um, as we go through tomorrow. Cold and dry. There's a big area of high pressure over us. We're going to go into Sunday morning about, and eh, this is about 8 a.m. So what you don't see here is we've got cold air in place, some overrunning going on. Not a lot of rain, but likely Mr. Drizzle that's going to be around for early Sunday. So you wake up Sunday morning, people ask me when the rain is going to start. Sometime around Saturday night, early Sunday morning. It'll be light. It gets worse as the day goes on. So this is Sunday at 8 a.m. Whoops, let me back this up. We jumped ahead too quickly. Let's go back to Sunday. So this is Sunday, 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Um, notice no severe weather, just rain across our area. Severe weather likely ongoing down in this area. An area I'm talking about would be over in here that I'd be able to, this is just overrunning rain because we've got cool air coming in from the north and east that's kind of helping us out. So let's do a quick sounding check. I'll just show you real quickly. Um, very big wind energy here, but notice the temperature. This is, there's not much cape. Um, the hodograph's kind of interesting, but no, no severe weather uh, in this setup. So this is a good sign during the day on Easter Sunday for us, not expecting severe weather. We'll go into Sunday night. Uh, this is 8 p.m. Sunday night. You notice uh, we've got some heavy rain. That would be the biggest concern on Sunday for me. Look what's going on to our west. This is the severe weather and probably down in here. We are still wedged in with cold air. So the fact that it's rainy and cloudy all day kills any instability. But where this starts to change, we go into Monday morning. I'm going to go to 2 o'clock in the morning. So this is Monday morning, 2 o'clock. Look at this nasty line of storms. Okay, this is two o'clock in the morning, Monday morning. So as you just saw, based on this guidance, and even if it's slower or faster, 
there's no severe weather anywhere near us on Sunday. Um, so that's why I think the threat on Sunday is really not much of anything, unless this thing speeds up and we get warm air in here. There's a lot, okay, but right now it doesn't appear that way. So we go into Monday morning. This is eight o'clock in the morning. This is where we could have severe weather. So Monday morning, right around 8 a.m., that is a squall line. Look at the wind back here. I know you can't tell these isobars packed together. That is a lot of wind. Let's say there's not a single bolt of lightning in that line. It still would have strong winds of 50, 60 miles an hour. So damaging winds would be a big concern for me on Monday morning. That's why we have a small threat for severe storms really late Monday or late Sunday into Monday. But in my opinion, it's really Monday that we see the highest threat. So let's take a look at some of the other guidance. So before we get into too much of the other signs, uh, um, guidance let me look at something here real quickly i want to look at some of the the shear ca uh, capabilities that we have um, a lot of shear with this there's obviously going to be a lot of wind energy let me look at the wind energy we're going to look at 950 millibar or 925 let's look at 925 um, just to show you some of the, the temperatures i want to show you the wind let me see if i can get the, there we go we'll back this up so this is basically going to be your wind speeds as the system comes in just off the surface. So we've got very strong low level jet. So areas east of I-77 early Monday, man, those are the areas we have to watch. This is going 2 a.m. Monday morning. And then look at this at 8 a.m. See all that wind energy? This is like we call it, just off the deck. This is a couple thousand feet above our heads. Um, and if you look, that's a 60 knot wind. I mean, that's 70, 75 mile per hour winds just off the surface. So again, no lightning, really, no severe thunderstorm needed. Just heavy rain in the front could mix those winds down to the surface. So Monday morning should be our primary concern in all of this. So Sunday, I think we're going to be fine. We're going to be wedged in. It's going to be cool, cloudy. And just to kind of show you the setup, I'm going to go and show you some of the instability parameters here using another product. All right, let's look at that all-important thunderstorm fuel for Sunday into Monday. So we'll go through time. Not much cape around. Um, you see Friday, there's just not a whole lot there. We'll go through Saturday, nothing there. Let's get into Sunday. Um, this is Sunday morning, Sunday afternoon. There's a little elevated cape, not a lot of cape. But watch what happens when we get to Monday morning. So this is going to be going into basically early Monday morning. This is a about so this is a 8 a.m this is 6 a.m so 6 a.m monday morning there's our thunderstorm fuel okay so again the emphasis if you're worried about sunday it's not so much sunday it's monday morning and here's the biggest concern of all to me it is the winds we are going to see probably high wind warnings up That'll just be with the front. That means not thunderstorms. It may not even rain where you are, but you could see 60, 65 mile per hour winds. So a lot of trees and power lines could come down um, as we go into Monday morning. Let me sh real quickly, I'm going to pull up the winds here. Um, let me look at the gust. So we'll back this up just to show you the wind gust. This is surface wind gust at 10 meters. So, and this is in miles per hour. So we'll go through Sunday. Not, not a lot of wind Sunday during the day. It's breezy. But watch what happens Sunday night into Monday as the front approaches. Look at the mountains in particular here. You see these brown shades? I'm going to go down here. That's 70 to 75. Mile. That's a 79 mile per hour wind gust at Boone. 77 up there at Jefferson. In Charlotte, that's a 51 mile per hour wind gust. So look at some of these winds moving across the Piedmont early Monday morning. And again, these are not necessarily associated with thunderstorms, just the cold front. So... That's what we're watching for really Monday morning. So um, I will update my vlog throughout the weekend to keep you up to date. The thing I would caution you for is don't think about tornadoes. Don't think about thunderstorms. Think about everybody seeing like hurricane force winds. Like think of tropical system, nor'easter, um, you know, the superstorm. Those type of winds that would happen with a big cold front. So high wind warnings are probably more probable than severe thunderstorm warnings. And with high wind warnings, it's the scary part about that is that it's not one storm and it's a gust. These winds will be blowing for hours. So trees and power lines would be our biggest concern, especially after all the heavy rain we see on Monday, which could soften the soil. So just something to prepare for as we go to Monday and something to think about. And you should be prepared for as well as we get closer to Monday.